Reading the press coming from America and England and, Amer and Europe, um, they describe you as the new Michael, J the female Michael Jackson. <laughs> have you read that? Uh, no, I haven't read that. Well, they have said that. <laughs> I've heard some other comparisons, but that's nice. That's yeah. flattering. Not bad, is it? Mm -hmm. So Madonna wasn't invited to sing on the recording of We Are The World. And that was sort of a bit of a slap in the face because everybody was in Los Angeles for the American Music Awards. We all went to dinner together. And I know she felt bad because, you know, I know Quincy and I know Michael, so I'm going over to the recording just to hang out. And I said to, to Madonna, I said, okay, we're headed over to A&M. And I could feel her feeling bad about that. So now it comes time, the closing number, Live Aid is We Are The World. And Madonna says, okay, I wasn't good enough to sing on the record. Well, I'm not singing the finale. And so she comes out, she, do, she does the thing with the Thompson Twins with us. She does her set, We Are The World, bang, she's gone. And she goes to my girlfriend's apartment with um, uh, Sean Penn. There are parties all over Los Angeles tonight, but when you talk Oscar night and parties, there is only one word, Spago. After the Academy Awards show, more big names make the trek across town to the Spago extravaganza. I said, did you guys enjoy the evening tonight? Fabulous, huh? fabulous. Did you, you attended this with uh, Michael Jackson, of mm -hmm. course. Was this, was this something you guys sat down and plotted out beforehand and said, we're just gonna knock no, it No, I didn't have a date for the Academy Awards. And Michael was like, well, who are you gonna go with? And he said, I looked at him and I said, I don't know, you want to go? <laughs> and he said, yeah, that'd be great. Did he pick you up at your house? It was one of those deals? Um, no, he didn't pick me up at my house because I was already there. I had, done, I had to do a run through yeah. of the show right before the show. So I was there ready. So he came and hung out backstage and then went out and watched the show and my performance. And then I came and sat down with him. So now afterwards, after the show and everything, did you and Michael go home together? Well, no, we went to um, Spago. Yeah. And there was a big party. We stayed there for hours and hours and hours. And uh, and then, yes, he took me home. <laughs> and um, now what do you want to know? What happened after that? Yeah. I'm not going to tell you. Okay. But you and Michael Jackson, now you see, I would be at a loss to talk to Michael Jackson as you're driving in the limo and all that traffic. What do you talk about with Michael Jackson? What do we talk about? Um, well, first I beg him not to wear sunglasses. <laughs> and of course he can fly. Uh, of course. I'm stronger than he is. That's right. And uh, then we um, exchange powder puffs. <laughs> <laughs> so you both look wonderful. We both powder our noses and, uh -huh. and uh, we compare bank accounts. I don't know. <laughs> Dynamite guy. Uh, yeah, he's great. And you, he's great. Naturally, everybody was looking at the two as they walked up. I know. You guys got the most recognition. Let's yeah. face it, two of the superstars of our time. Yeah. We're working on a song. Yeah. It's not, we, you know, we, I'm a perfectionist, he's a perfectionist. I'm glad to be working with him, yeah. just to have the experience, yeah. you know, he's a great musical talent. Um, but, you know, we're going to wait and finish it and then go, okay, do we want to do this? Does he want to put it in his album? Is that the next musical statement yeah. I want to make, you know? And mm -hmm. there was a lot of talk, of course, at one time of you working with Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. I know you were quite keen on that and mm -hmm. people were looking forward to it. It would have been yeah. really something. Well, maybe. So you weren't happy? Was it the chemistry that caused it to fall apart then? Well, it's not that I was unhappy. I mean, it was an experiment. Um, he called me. He wanted to write a song with me. I mean, he approached me, and I, I was, like, curious. Um, it's, it's hard for me to write music with people because I have to really know them and trust them and feel that I can really make myself vulnerable because when you write, you have to sort of bear a little bit of your soul and you have to not be afraid to make mistakes and to sing in front of someone. You know, it's, it's, in a way, it's a very intimate experience. So I wasn't sure it was going to work, even though I, I think he's talented. Um, so we got together and he played me a, a bit of music. It was very un, a very unfinished track. And he said that he wanted to call the song In the Closet. And I said, really? Well, no, no, hold it a second before uh, we go on uh, there. Uh, <laughs> what exactly was he referring to there? Well, that's think? the, wait, wait, that's what I'm getting to. I said, you want to call the song In the Closet? And he said, yeah. And I said, well, do you know what that implies? And he said, yeah. And he sort of giggled a little bit. And I said, well, well, you know, I like to deal with these kind of, 
ironic innuendo kind of thing. So if you want to go that way, I was kind of like shocked that he wanted yeah. to call something like that because it's very provocative, the title. And um, so he said, yeah. So I started writing words and getting ideas and stuff. And I presented them to him and he didn't like them. And I think that he didn't, I think all he wanted was a provocative title. And ultimately he didn't want the content of the song to be sort of live up to the title and... It's quite interesting because it's almost like you are, you, 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 traditionally, you've got the kind of masculine role in that relationship and he is the passive... Yes, definitely. But let's not go much further let's with that, Let's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're welcome to. There was talk, I believe, that you were going to restyle him, you didn't like the way he looked. What, what did you have in mind for him? Well, I really wanted him to cut his hair. <laughs> I mean, you know, just that, you know, just, I think sometimes it's good to cut your hair and start all over again. How short That was my you... main thing. I wanted him to get a really short haircut. I, I just, and I wanted him to get rid of those loafers, you know, and the white socks. I just thought, you know, just try something new. But, you know. There's been some talk with you and Michael Jackson about, as we, we've talked about you changing your image. Mm -hmm. Are you going to change Michael Jackson's image? There, is, there has been speculation about that. I know, when I, 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 I guess, you know, we got together and I, you know, I can't help it. You can see how I am with the dancers. I sort of have to, get my hands in there and go, oh, you should do this, you should wear that, you should cut your hair, you should do... You know, and I gave him a lot of books to read and director's reels, and I, I wanted, because I see, I think he's very talented, but I felt that uh, he needed to be exposed to more things than he, he had been exposing himself to, so... I think we read books, though, quite frankly. We were looking at... Um, I have tons of books on photography. Yeah. So that was... That, was, I, that sticks out in my mind. Jackson was all smiles in the car, but on these tapes, he reveals that the material girl's saucy ways felt more than a little dangerous. I tried to have an influence on him. I don't know if he's going to heed any of my advice. After all, he's done pretty well for himself without me, so. I mean, when I told you we were at the table eating, some little kids came up. Oh my God, Mike, you're dancing Madonna. Can we have your autograph? And he said, yes, get out of here. Leave us alone. I said, don't you ever talk to children like this. He said, shut up. I said, you shut up. That's how we oh, learned to sit. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, he didn't say anything. He didn't Jackson does paint Madonna as envious when he talks about jealousy in Hollywood. We admire you and know you're wonderful and great, but they're jealous because they wish they were in your place, wish they were in your shoes. And M is one of them. Madonna, she's not a nice. She hasn't been kind. She's jealous. Absolutely. She's a woman, and I think that's what bothers her. Women don't screen for other women, and men are too too cool to screen for women. Mm. And I get that. I get the, the, the fainting and the, the adulation and the, the notoriety that she does, and she can't get that. It looks like Michael Jackson is breaking up the crush grabs early. Who are you trying to fool, Michael? You stole that move from me. That's a lie, Madonna. And you know it. Oh, yeah. You want to see crotch grabbing? Nate, this is one of the most bizarre displays I have ever seen in our ring. It appears to be some kind of crotch-grabbing Mexican standoff. The tension is unbearable. One of these fighters is going to have to give in. Happy birthday.
extreme steps to hide her kids, son like that other pop icon, Michael Jackson. Who can forget that bizarre scene of Jackson covering his children's faces with masks in the now infamous Martin Bashir documentary? Madonna and Jackson are what you'd call showbiz pals, sharing an only in Hollywood date to the Academy Awards back in 1991. Still friends? Oh, I haven't talked to him in ages. Did you see the documentary? I didn't. I heard about it. Everybody was talking about it at one point and describing scenes to me. It just sounds horrifying. I wouldn't want to watch it. Horrifying in what way? Oh, it just, it just sounds so exploit, exploitive. So, I don't know. I don't like it. I don't like people humiliating other people like that. It doesn't seem right and fair. You said this. Publicly humiliating someone for your own gain, which is, I think, what you feel Martin Bashir may yes. have done, mm -hmm. will only come back to haunt you. I can assure you, all these people will be sorry. God's going to have his revenge. Mm -hmm. Michael Jackson. I have a little bit more to say than that. He seemed otherworldly, but he was also a human being. Like most performers, he was shy and plagued with insecurities. I can't say we were great friends, but in 1991 I decided I wanted to try and get to know him better. I asked him out to dinner. I said, my treat, I'll drive, just you and me. He agreed and showed up to my house without any bodyguards. We drove to the restaurant in my car. It was dark out, but he was still wearing sunglasses. I said, Michael, I feel like I'm talking to a limousine. Do you think you could take off those glasses so I can see your eyes? He paused for a moment, then he tossed the glasses out the window, looked at me with a wink and a smile and said, can you see me now? Is that better? In that moment, I could see both his vulnerability and his charm. The rest of the dinner, I was hell-bent on getting him to eat french fries, drink wine, have dessert and say bad words. <laughs> Things he never seemed to allow himself to do. Later, we went back to my house to watch a movie, and we sat on the couch like two kids, and somewhere in the middle of the film, his hand snuck over and held mine. It felt like he was looking for a friend more than a romance, and I was happy to oblige him. There is no question that Michael Jackson was one of the greatest talents the world has ever known. How important was it for you to be here to honor Michael? Extremely important, because, um, I really didn't have uh, my chance to pay my last respects to him or speak of him in the way that I wanted to. So uh, it was a privilege and an honor for me to say what I had to say. The Queen of Pop has paid tribute to the King of Pop. Madonna's used the opportunity of her latest concert to pay her respects to Michael Jackson. A picture of the star as a boy appeared on giant screens as Madonna was performing Holiday. The singer then danced along with the Jacko impersonator who thrilled the 17,000 crowd at the O2 in London with some of the star's trademark moves. What made it all the more poignant was that it was in the very venue where just a week from now Jackson was due to embark on a gruelling series of 50 concerts. But leave it to Madge to reveal something no one saw coming. Did you kiss? Of course. No. Of course. You and Michael Jackson. I mean, baby, I've been around. Yes, you heard that right. Madonna revealed she hooked up with the king of pop. Full French kissing. Yeah, tongue and mouth kissing. I did not know that. So hang on. So who makes the first move? You or Michael Jackson? Who leans in? Well, I did. If you want to know the truth. Because he's a little bit shy. Yeah. However, he was a willing accomplice. <laughs> I did, I did, I did get him to sort of loosen up with a glass of Chardonnay. Yeah. Yeah. It, and it did wonders. It worked wonders. Have you ever said that before? That you would, that you would. No. You the... I mean, I may have said it to a friend. Yeah. Since the release of the documentary *Leaving Neverland*, now Madonna is also weighing in. Yeah, so Madonna's on the cover of British Vogue, and she says she isn't going to take the claims the alleged victims make.
at face value. She tells the magazine, I don't have a lynch mob mentality, so in my mind, people are innocent until proven guilty. I've had a thousand accusations hurled at me that are not true, so my attitude when people tell me things about people is, can you prove it? Yeah, now when the writer asked Madonna, would she interpret, what would she interpret as proof? Madonna said this, I don't know, I haven't seen the film, but I guess it would be people recounting actual events, but then of course people sometimes lie. So I always say, what's the agenda? What do people want out of this? Are, the, are, are there people asking for money? Is there some kind of extortion thing happening? I would take all of those things into consideration. You can't hate on somebody when their mandate is to allow due process to find the truth and to not weigh in on something and to not want to convict some, somebody. And I think that what Madonna said was solid and yeah. a lot of people feel that way. Yeah, Alexia says, yeah, I honestly agree with Madonna. Mike says, I believe this is an honest answer. Yeah, you have to believe yeah. in due process. Just, you do, that's it. Weird There's 